Good afternoon and welcome, welcome one and all. We're going to just give it a couple of minutes to allow everyone to, to get onto the call. But happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. I'm not going to say it's coming home, but it, 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 there, there could be some big things happening on Sunday. OK, so I want to welcome each and every one of you to the career fair where we're talking about careers in retail and private banking. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Charles Juba and Ricky Benjamin, perhaps the best dressed bankers that you're ever going to come across, the best dressed bankers you're going to ever come across. And look, this is the first lesson. This is about the first lesson of showing up. And, and I'm going to ask my good friend Charles to talk about when he first started in banking in terms of what he had to do in order to fit in. And we'll talk about that because we'll just uh, discuss that before we started. So I'm going to give it another five, ten seconds to make sure we can get people in. I, I expect more of you will be joining us anytime soon. Now, in terms of some of the things that I'm keen to make sure you do, Charles and, and Ricky are great guys. They're going to give you some insights in terms of the different careers in retail and also private banking. Now, please use the Q&A box. These guys want to help you. So let's use this 45 minutes that we've got to really get to understand how they became successful. What were some of the challenges that they, they've experienced, okay? So let's kick off. Now I'm delighted to introduce Charles Juba, who works for C Hawes, a private bank. Now Charles is an online and mobile platform manager. He's passionate for user-centered product design, innovation and impactful digital leadership. So this is quite interesting, guys. You don't have to be an economics major. You don't have to be a maths major. You know, you can be about innovation, you can be about technology and have a, have a career in the city. Now, Charles completed his undergraduate degree in applied science, economics and business finance at Brunel University. And from there, he had a varied career, including as a financial analyst at Accenture, compliance analyst at the BBC, and a business analyst at the Walt Disney Company. So you can see he's got a really well-versed, um, broad background, which has now helped him to be able to become a very successful man. Now, one last thing about Charles, he's completing his MBA at Henley Business School and is due to graduate in 2022. A very warm welcome to you, Charles. Thank you very, very much. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here with you guys and just uh, to share knowledge. I'm looking to learn from you guys as well. And thank you very much for that very kind introduction, Michael. Charles, my pleasure, my pleasure. Look, we're going to come back to you shortly because I'm really keen to understand a little bit about what an online and mobile platform manager does on a day-to-day -day basis. So would love to, for you to be able to expand that a little bit more and also talk to me a little bit about your organization. Um, Look, certainly last, but certainly by no means least, Ricky Benjamin from TSB. Now, Ricky is regional senior manager um, for London and the South East for TSB Bank. He, he, he's, a big, he's a big man. So I want you to understand, participants, that you're talking to somebody who's at the top of his game. So one interesting thing about Ricky He's a former garage musician, but Ricky now leads branch transformation, as I mentioned before. He graduated in mathematics and computer science at Brunel University and has 18 years experience in retail banking. Clearly Ricky moisturizes because he does not look like he's got 18 years experience. So Ricky's retail banking career started with him working as a customer service assistant. And as I mentioned before, rose through the banks at Cheltenham and Gloucester over 10 years. He then moved to TSB where alongside his day-to-day -day role, he acts as the diversity and inclusion co-chair for ethnicity. Ricky, a warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much, Michael. It's great to be here. 
love what 10,000 Black Interns is all about. Well, I think the first question, Ricky, and I'm going to have to go to you, what, what was your garage name? Um, it wasn't that creative, unfortunately. It was my initials, RB, so MCRB. Okay, that, that's not very innovative at all. So um, <laughs> let's put you back on you. Look, um, so look, guys, we've got the chat room starting to, to start to live up. So they might be asking some questions and getting Ricky to spit some bars for us. But, but Ricky, we're going to talk to um, Charles in the first instance. So look, Charles, I'm really keen to understand a little bit about you in terms of your journey, in, in terms of day to day. So what you do at Halls but also how you got into the interest industry because you've had so many different roles um, in your career. And I'm really keen to see how that aided you on your journey to, to end up at Horse. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Thank you very much once again. Uh, I just spotted my colleague, uh, Joe from Seahor & Co. So I'm sure he'll speak more about the front office side of things. Um, so as Michael said, I'm a online and uh, mobile platform manager. So what, really what that entails is I have ownership of the entirety of the bank's mobile and online banking um, application uh, platforms. So if you, if, you're, if you bank with anyone, your mobile app for banking, I, I manage that on the equivalent on this side of the um, of Seahor and Co. But that entails strategy. So helping to understand how does the bank's goal translate into features and into uh, interesting things on the, on the app. Um, it's about managing teams. So I have teams here in the UK, in Ukraine and in India, um, development teams, testing teams, design teams. And it's just coordinating all those resources to help the bank really achieve value out of its online and its mobile channels um, effectively. So, you know, to keep it simple, I have app developers. So if you download apps from the iOS store or from the Google store, pretty much the same concept. Um, and so typically my day-to-day -day is talking to maybe the CTO or the chief customer officer to understand their vision, understand what are their broad goals and transla translating that into a strategy and a plan of action. And then you know, working with business stakeholders in, in the bank, um, you know, Seahor & Co is a private retail bank. So literally we do everything that your bank does, loans, mortgages, but we do them in a much more interesting way, you know, much more bespoke way. And so, you know, work with each of those product owners to understand how can I translate their needs and their goals into value on our online and mobile platforms. That, that's at a, as a nutshell is what my day-to-day -day looks like. Um, in terms of how I got there, um, you know, I, I left university in 2004 and my first job was as a finance analyst at Accenture. And, you know, that leveraged my economics degree and helped me to start to understand the financial world. And it gave me tools to understand how the world works. Uh, frankly, if I'm, if I'm watching the news, I understand why if, you know, the currency in the UK is getting stronger, how does that affect you know, the goods that we buy in the shops, because many of those things are, are, are made in other countries. It helps me understand if the Bank uh, of England increases its interest rate, how does that affect my credit cards balance or my, my loans or my mortgage? So things like that. And really my journey since then has been one of, you know, learning. I, I, I transitioned from finance into becoming a management consultant um, in technology because I realized actually one of the things I enjoy most is talking to people and turning ideas into solutions. So on that journey, I, I, I got to work for the BBC, a really fun place. Um, worked for Walt Disney, as you mentioned, Michael. One of the coolest things about working at Walt Disney is a lot of their offices are themed. So you walk into the Star Wars room, into the Captain America room and, and things like that. And you have life-size you know, figurines. And, and really the learning that I got um, I, I put it as three things. So number one, you know, having worked at various companies, I, I realized that I was layering skills and experience with each role, right? And each skill and experience got me the next role. So I started off as a finance analyst, became a consultant in technology. I, 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 I don't code, I'm not a developer, but I manage technology teams. And the only reason I can do that now is because I was able to work across many different roles, learning about technology, and, and I can go into that more later on. But really, the key thing was, you know, developing a broad spectrum of experience. And when the really helped. came up, really helped. 
look, I, and I could I can listen to you for the next 20, 30 minutes just in terms of your journey. But again, what's great here is that um, Charles has graduated and he's done multi multiple roles which have aided him. So he's got his backpack. He's learning from each experience and applying it to the role that he's doing now. And again, I want you all to hit up the Q&A with questions around this, because I'm sure some of you are studying degrees and want to ask how you can pivot. So please make sure you use the chat box. Now, really King Ricky, for, for you to be able to try and follow jo Charles's lead, just in terms of um, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis as a regional head um, at TSB, and talk a little bit about the organization in terms of what, what does it do principally on a day-to-day -day basis as an as entity? Okay, thank you. So as um, regional senior manager in London and South East, um, I, I think of my role as having three parts, if you like. Um, so there's the regional responsibility to anything to do with transformation, whether that's refurbishing branches um, or setting up pop-up branches across the region. I'd have oversight of that and be part of the planning and, and deployment. Um, also, there's central projects. So I'm involved in projects that cover the entire estate, so nationally. Um, and we've got a project called uh, telephone and video interviewing, and that enables us to be flexible and help customers in um, different ways, not just face-to-face -face or on the phone, but we can do video anywhere in the country. And also um, another part of my role is leading um, three of the flagship branches across the region. So the, those bank managers, they report directly into me as well. Um, so day-to-day, -day, very, very varied. Um, I'm often on, on important calls, um, um, making decisions about the direction that certain projects are gonna go in. Um, I have a lot of one-to-one -one conversations with my direct reports, those bank managers, um, and a few days a week, I'm actually out in the branches, seeing how things are working, seeing what it's like on the shop floor, Ricky, as well as I, developing I, as the day I, goes by. Sorry, Ricky, and sorry to interject, because hmm. I, I'm, I'm sat here just thinking, how, how did it happen? You know, because again, I, if I'm an 18 year old, 19 year old, and I'm seeing, you know, you looking really slick, Charles the same, and, and Joe, no, seriously, it's intimidating. I want to understand how you got to how you got, got to where you got to. So what, what, was the, what are the steps of you being able to do that? If you can try and wrap that in a minute for me, that'd be great. So I want to make sure we can speak to Joe, but I'm just keen to understand yeah. what steps that you made to, to be able to get to the top. Yeah, so like you said, and um, wrapping it up in a minute, I'm going to do my best because I could talk forever, um, but started um, at the bank uh, as a customer service assistant, recently out of university, so that enabled me to fast track. Um, my mindset was key. I just believed that I could achieve and I was gonna put in the effort. Um, I was gonna learn and be a real sponge for how the organization worked. And I quickly uh, became a mortgage advisor, then assistant manager, then bank manager, but always just looking around me and seeing where were the opportunities for me to learn and grow within the role. Um, I always tried to be the best I could be and then success brought opportunities. Um, and then I got into area management, lots of variety in different roles. Charles yeah. talked about layering your skills. So yeah. that leveraged me to the positions that I'm in now. Look, and, and look, we're gonna spend a good 15, 20 minutes with Q and A because the, 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 the questions coming in are blown up right now. So I want to make sure that we could answer the, the questions. Now, um, look, tardiness is not, is frowned upon, but I think Joe, Joe was on some important transactions. In his role at Seahorse, he looks after Marcus Rashford. He looks after rap rappers like Stormzy. So when they call, he has to answer them. So that so apologies that Joe wasn't there on time, but I want to introduce Joe. So Joe is a relationship manager at System. Okay, so we've mentioned about Seahorse. They're the oldest privately owned investment um, private bank. Um, Joe basically looks after high net worth individuals in terms of their investment needs. Um, and they come to him and his team to get advice. So again, I will allow it, Joe, that you were a few minutes late talking to Marcus and Mason Mounts about their portfolio, okay? But make sure you get on time for the next 10,000 black interns call. 
Now, look, what I think is important about Joe is what I love about his background. He started his career in consumer and the retail sector. So it was part of the management scheme at JD Sports. I started off in retail, right? So I really love the fact that he started um, at JD. He learned great principles there, which has spearheaded him, him onto his career. So he's worked at RBS, working in insurance and the sales side of the business. And following on from recommendations from his colleagues, he moved into the relationship management team as an assistant private banker at the Royal, the Queen's Bank, Coots, okay? So Joe managed relationships with sports stars, musicians, and high net worth individuals. Joe doesn't return my call, so I'm not, I'm not wealthy enough or successful enough yet for Joe. So look, Joe, welcome to the call. What I would love to do, brother, if you can just give me a high level around what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Let our people understand what you do, but also some of the principles that you've learned along the way in terms of your, your career, please. So uh, thank you, Michael. Thanks for that introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, and, and appreciate being here and, and with Ricky and Charles. It's, um, it's, it's, it's really important that we're able to give, you know, we're able to have this platform um, and also for, to give these opportunity to, to you know, young black interns. Um, so I work in Frontline at, at Hawes and Frontline would be as a, I'm a relationship manager assistant, a junior banker, so to speak. We actually, you mentioned, Michael, you mentioned investments and that's something that I did um, in a previous role. Now at Hawes, we have kind of streamlined what we do to, to sort of to strengthen the business in a way. And we sold our investment business, sold our, our wealth business, and we focus on uh, loans and deposits. So that's where we sort of, uh, we make our money as a bank. Um, my role on a day-to-day -day basis is dealing with, with customers, um, you know, speaking to them via email, uh, phone, um, having conversations around their accounts, uh, what they're looking to do with their money moving forward. Uh, on a day-to-day on a -day basis, um, so we, I think what's good about the role is you have, it's varied, you know, a lot like Ricky's and, and Charles, of course. Um, it's varied, but then you do have your, your, your regular tasks. So you have your, um, you're looking at, um, you know, very much like you would do it in a retail setting. Um, you've got your uh, dailies, which re refer to overdrawn accounts. Um, you also look at uh, large transactions that come into the, to uh, customers accounts as well. And we call them, uh, I, I refer to them as customers. A lot of the private banking and the sort of the high net worth settings, you'll probably um, hear more referred to as clients. Mm -hmm. We uh, whores as a sort of family owned business. Uh, there's a long background there that I can, I can go into. I, I don't want to take too much time. Um, we see our clients as as more customers, okay. as, as more uh, as more someone, you know, they work alongside us, so to speak. So, okay. our customers, we're looking at large payments. We're looking at uh, we're looking at transactions that are coming in on a daily. Anything that's unusual or doesn't fit the regular pattern, so we will assess that as well. Then, moving through, through throughout the day, could be you know you're dealing with uh, payments going out to foreign countries for uh, anything from holidays to cars. To, um, very, 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 yeah, very, very, in that respect. So can I just, can I just interject for a second? And I, I want to bring the other panelists in, Joe, yeah. because um, that's a really comprehensive overview. Hmm. But I'm 16. I'm from, I'm from Wembley. I'm from Wembley. I'm from yeah. Wembley. And my, my favourite movie growing up back in the day was Wall Street. And I wanted to be a banker. <laughs> but I'm from Wembley. And I didn't have any role models around me to tell me what the difference was from retail banking to private banking to investment banking. So can we can we just maybe take a step back as a panel, okay? And I, I want you all to be able to give me like a 30 seconds or 45 second overview of what the difference. So Charles, I'm gonna to come to you. What is the difference between retail bank, no, difference from private banking 
to investment banking. Because again, I want to make sure the participants on this call learn something. So they're learning about your journey, but what's the difference in terms of the industry? Of course. So let's just, let's define banking in this simple way. Banking is basically this. I take money from some people and I, uh, and I, get, and I pay them a small amount of interest. So that's your current account. And then I take the, some of that money and I lend it to other people and I charge them more interest. The difference between the interest I charge these people and the little interest that I pay you is how I make your money. And that's what banking is. It's, it, so, so core retail banking is really about lending. And investment banking is about taking different types of financial instruments and, and, and trading them um, and managing your, your portfolio for you. So you'll hear about things like the stock market and, and, and derivatives and all these other really fancy things. Really, when you break it down, it's about taking your money and finding ways to make it grow for you. And, and charging you a percentage every time I trade or charging you a commission um, to manage that money for you. So really when you think about it, those are the two areas of banking, retail and, and investment. And private sits somewhere in the middle because with private banking is really caters to customers who they can go to, to, to normal retail banks. So a lot of high net worth people do bank at your retail banks, the high street banks, but they want a bespoke special service. They want things done in a certain way that a lot of your high street banks can't do. Um, and so private banks cater to that. So for example, guys like Joe will go visit the, the, the customer at their house and go talk to them and see them in person. Um, a customer can come in for lunch and talk about their accounts. Um, the, we, at Horse Bank, we have interesting events where we ask customers to come in almost like a networking. So uh, private banking caters to these kind of complex needs that mm -hmm. retail banks can't cater for. And building well, relationships. And, and that's yeah, what generational you know, relationships, yes. Building relationships, that's what private banking, that's what we do in private banking. That is it's different to, to retail. And and retail customers, you know, some retail customers, they don't want that. A private banking customer would, would look for that because they need to trust you, they need to know you, they need to kind of look in the whites of your eyes and and, and know that you're going to be looking after their money. That's great. Now I'm mindful of time because we we've still got maybe half an hour left, but I want to make sure I can get through everything. Um Ricky, let's talk about TSB and let's talk about, again, we've got 50, 60, 70 people on this call wanting to understand the different types of roles they are available as interns within not just TSB, and I'll get Charles to talk about some internship opportunities that will be at C Halls, but what types of roles would they expect to have at TSB as an intern or potential graduates? All right, great, great question. I'm gonna start with just talking a little bit about what um, the retail uh, banking is and go into the details of it's more than meets the eye. Um, so just to bring it to life, you experience retail banking, which is also known as high street banking. Every time you visit your bank on the high street or call your bank on the phone or use a digital option like a mobile app. So in retail banking, we help protect, reward, and educate customers with a variety of products and services, like has been mentioned already, a current account or savings, insurance, mortgages, as well as support key events during a customer's financial life cycle. Your finances and banking, this is something that not everybody um, realizes until it's said, they facilitate so many things in your life. So for example, you use your card or contactless to pay for a coffee or arranging a mortgage to buy your own home. So it's really important that we get that relationship right. So when it comes specifically to TSB, we've got over 250 branches across the UK, but there's so much more to a bank than just the branches and stores that you see on the high street. So we've got three head office sites and telephony contact centers too. At these head office sites, there are so many different departments, for example, marketing, legal, finance, treasury, risk, HR, IT, operations, digital, the list goes on. So there's lots of things that happen behind the scenes. And some of the things that you'll see happen behind the scenes, which is really interesting, can be things like um, how quickly we created an Adobe customer web chat to meet the demands in very, very short timescales, or the thought that goes into the placement of items on an app and how products are created, or even deciding on who is the right face to fit an advert. And when it comes to the placements that we're offering, um, we've got most of the, the uh, intern placements are mainly in London, but there are some in Edinburgh as well, because in Edinburgh is where the IT center is. Um, 
So there's loads of opportunity to get some hands-on experience of what it's like to work in a variety of these functions within a bank. Mm -hmm. We'll also set you like a project to work alongside other interns. So lots of interaction and opportunity to bring ideas forward. We've also got just regular jobs um, in these departments which graduates can uh, apply for and immediately feel valued and part of the team. And they could be found on tsbcareers.co.uk. And the kind of people that we look for are people who want to make a difference across the bank for our customers and the communities that we serve. And I just want to finish on talking about what we call um, at TSB our Do What Matters plan. And it's got five goals. And within the Do What Matters plan, under customers goal, we've got the um, drive to help people have money confidence. Mm -hmm. And money confidence um, mm -hmm. can mean so many different things to different people. We've also got business goals around treating businesses fairly and helping them grow. We've got colleagues goals, so creating a truly inclusive workplace, community, so working locally with our communities to help them thrive. And finally, environment, so reducing our impact on the environment, we're um, helping customers and partners do the same. So lots that happen in a bank. No, and, and look, thanks for that, Ricky. And I'll, I'll move to Joe shortly. But if I'm, if I'm sat here as a, as a, as a student, and I look, at, I look at the types of opportunities that are not just within TSB, but the industry as a whole. So both TSB and C Halls are around and supporting 10,000 black interns. They want you within their organizations. We've got three, I'm sat here and I've got, you know, Needles on me. I, I'm, I'm looking at the, the panelists. We've got three incredible people in front of us. But what's interesting, they look like us. They've walked maybe a different path, but we've got someone from JD Sports Management. We've got uh, an MC. We've got a very smooth operator in Charles. But there are parts of them that we can look at and think, I can identify with them. So what's really important for the next 15 minutes is light up that Q&A box, because if you don't, I've got lots of questions that I want to ask these guys. Now, Joe, I want to come to you because very similar, it sounds as though with TSB, there are roles for everyone in terms of degree, background, interest, etc. Tell me, what types of internship opportunities are there within C Halls and Co. Yeah, so um, last year I was actually training um, a young lady and she uh, was doing an internship, uh, apprenticeship in uh, front in frontline uh, banking and uh, relationship management. So she's on a course to become an assistant relationship manager. Um, and she, um, she's doing really well. She was a three month sort of training pro program that I put her on. Um, and now she's started at the, she started, you know, we're working directly with a experienced relationship manager. She's learning um, a lot. And um, so that's, that's what just, that's literally just one path. You know, you've got the, the IT department as well that Charles could tell you more about. Um, we also have um, compliance, which is, is actually, it's interesting because compliance rules regulation i don't want to you know necessarily talk about crypto but that's coming you know that's something that is a big in banking and money and you know wealth so you've got that that sector of the bank as well um you've you've also got the the marketing the the marketing team um as well okay. which we, we we have joe i listen I, i'm so i think we should have had two hours to do to do <laughs> this not just with you joe but just given how much experience that you all have now, I've got a question that I want to ask you all, and I, I need it to be to be delivered within 45 seconds each, okay? And then we're going to go on to our Q&A. Now, what I've learned from these career fairs, young people do brunch. They don't do dinner parties anymore, okay? So the question I want to ask you is that when you're at a brunch or dinner party and you say, hi, I'm Joe, I work in private banking, What's the, what's the natural assumption? Because I want to debunk the myth of what you guys do. And the same with you, Ricky. You know, so in 45 seconds, Charles, can you give me an example when you're going to a dinner party or a, a brunch and you say you work in private banking? 
No, thanks. I, I think the, the initial impression is, oh, you work in an old boys club or it's a very much uh, old white English type institution. And the reality is private banking is like any organization. It, it, it needs good, talented people to be able to mm -hmm. find and talent doesn't have a color. And so if you are talented, if you've got potential and, you know, if you're able to show up, you, you can get in. First time I showed up at the place, I was surprised that, oh my gosh, this private bank's going to hire me. But actually having worked here, I can't believe I even thought that, you know, because frankly, if you're good at your job, you can get anywhere. Thank you. Ricky. Um, so, yeah, when introducing that I work for a bank um, and I say the name of the bank and um, people say, oh, that's the one with David Schwimmer from Friends on the telly. And yeah, um, that's, it's a, a, great, a great thing to, to relate to because it's very popular. Um, but when you tell people the role that you do, they're often very Im impressed, I guess, is the first impression that you get. Um, mm -hmm. But like, like Charles said, um, when you come into TSB and you experience the environment, there is that desire, that um, inclusive environment, always looking for talent. There are so many talent um, opportunities and schemes happening in the organization. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a really great place to be. Thank you, Ricky. Joe, I want to give you 30 seconds, brother. Sorry. Um, I'll be honest with you. It's been different for the different banks that I've worked at, you know, so it depends, you know, Seahaw and Co is a little bit um, lesser known, um, a little bit more niche. So I think um, I had a, uh, I, I met someone new last, last week for dinner and um, she, her reaction was she had uh, she, she thought it was an exclusive club, you know, a bit like like Charles said, and it was exclusive because she hadn't heard of it. But then when I mentioned other um, other places that I've been, she was like, "Oh, okay, that's a bit more well known." So it's all it's all differentiates. But you know, like the others have said, it's something that's I, 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 that's accessible to people. You know, this is something that is is available to to people if you reach out. So this is it. We've got twelve minutes to get through some of these questions. Um, thank you very much for that, Joe. Um, so this question has been, uh, I'm going to maybe point it to either Charles or Ricky, okay? Um, so this, this has basically come up and they said, do I need to look slick um, like Charles or Ricky? <laughs> I, I've embellished a little bit. I, I know they, 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 but do I need to look slick or look a certain way to work in these industries, you know, like sectors, like client relationship management, like Joe um, in innovation. So could, can someone answer that for me, please? I'll, I'll go ahead on that one, thank you. Um, so I suppose it's the, the definition of what you say looks slick is. Um, from a personal perspective, I like to see that someone has taken their time to um, take pride in their appearance. So they don't just roll out of bed and turn up. Um, um, I wouldn't specifically say you need to dress a particular way. You can walk around our head office and find people in polo shirts and shirts, smart jeans on certain days. Um, but in the front line, when you're in a branch, uh, we have uniforms. So everybody looks like they're part of the organization. So mm -hmm. it, it meets with the furniture and things like that. So it's just about taking pride in your, your appearance and, and having that confidence. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there's a question I want to ask uh, Joe. Um, one second. How do you build trust in your day to day work with clients, Joe? For me, and especially during the pandemic, it's about getting things right first time. You know, if you're, 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 you're getting things right with, with, with clients and, and making sure that you're not making mistakes you know, that immediately builds trust, you know, even if you're not meeting someone face to face, you know, it helps having that sort of, and I think that's what helps with relationship with our private banking is that we get to meet our customers, you know, we mm. get to sit down, we get to spend a bit of time with them. But I think transactionally, you know, if, if someone asks you to do something, if you get it right straight away, it, it builds trust. So, so what, what Joe's basically saying, in fact, what was so eloquently put is about execution. Do, do, yeah. as, do, do what you say you're going to do, yeah. and it's about execution, proving yourself, and that's when the opportunities come. Thank you very much. Um, Ricky, question for you. What is the career progression like working in a retail bank? Um, 
And then ultimately, I'll ask Charles the same in terms of what the career progression is like. Um, and, and Joe might be able to chime in, in in terms of a private bank. So career progression in, in um, retail bank, in TSB in particular, um, often uh, someone might start in, um, in a branch, for example. Um, but then there are opportunities to move into mortgages, become a mortgage advisor. We help our colleagues uh, through the training to do that. If that's a path they want to go down, you can follow a management um, journey. Um, but one thing we always do is with our vacancies, we publish those to all colleagues. So if you fancy going from branch into a head office role into a different department, we can set up shadow days. Um, and then it gives you the, the tools to, to apply with some experience to move around the organization. So there is that ability to move sideways upwards and get a broad breadth of experience through the organization. Okay, thank you. And what about C Halls, Charles and Joe? Is it, is it more structured in the sense of that career progression? It depends on which part of business you work in. So if you are in the front office like Joe, you can go from being an assistant RM to becoming an RM, a section head, you can become head of banking and so on. In technology, same thing. So I work in tech, so I'm a platform manager. I can, you can start off as a, an analyst. If you don't want to be a coder, you can be an analyst, business analyst, product owner, platform manager. Really the career trajectory, especially because we're a small bank, means that there's more opportunities to move laterally as well as vertically because you know when there, when an opportunity presents itself there's less you know rings to go through you can actually find opportunities so as an example i came initially as a consultant on the monday and by the friday i'd been promoted as a platform manager within horse bank and then a few years later i was taken on as a permanent member of staff and so again i come back to that thing talent meets opportunity if if you're good at what you do and you and you, and you present yourself in the right way those opportunities are there so look i'm mindful of time and some of the questions that we're getting are like next level smart you know talking about um platform integration impact of cryptocurrency but i want to talk about these participants these people that look like us getting through the door now, I've done this for the last two weeks in terms of career fairs. And I'm gonna go back to myself as, as a 16 year old at Wem in, from Wembley, looking at you three guys like you're untouchable. You might look like my uncles, but, but, but my point is, no, no, you, you look younger than me, Charles, but my point is um, you guys look so confident. You've got experience, okay? So if I'm an 18, 19 year old at Middlesex University, but I don't have the opportunity to intern or work because I'm looking after my siblings, cooking for them, and I've got a side hustle of selling hair and stuff like that. What do we bring? Do we bring that to Seahorse? Do we bring that to TSB that I used to be a garage MC, right? What, what do we bring or what do we not bring? So I need, I need you to tell our brothers and sisters on this call what they need to do in order to show up. I, um, so that, yeah, sorry, Ricky. Okay, thank you. So, so at TSB, I've touched on it before about um, that inclusive environment. We want people to be able to bring their whole selves to work. Um, we are very flexible. If you've got outside commitments and things like that, we've got a carer scheme. So um, we're always flexible around those sorts of things. We're really open to the idea that um, it's not just a, um, trying to fit into a box, um, the myth that you need to have a certain qualification, speak a certain way, look a certain way. It's about um, realizing the skills that you've got and a lot of skills that we have that we don't realize are really transferable. So once you get um, apply for a role, um, we have diverse and inclusive panels. Um, when you're successful in your um, application, we have mm -hmm. uh, our ethnicity network and we help people with their career progression from um, how do you have a conversation about the next role? What sort of training and qualification can you do to prepare yourself for um, other opportunities? Um, so bring your best self, present yourself well, um, read the application and um, use those uh, transferable skills. Okay, and look, I, I know Joe and Charles have got a view on this, but in, in terms of what degrees do you need? Do you need to be a mathematician? Do you need to study business? What, what, 
What are banks looking for? What are your organizations? And remember, keep it level, because again, I want to make sure that these guys have got an understanding of what needs to get them through the door in the first place. Personally, for me, um, without any degrees, you know, I went from college straight into working. Um, from my experience, it's been work ethic um, and also the ability, you know, the people skills. Those are the two things that have really um, advanced my career. I, I would say, um, so, you know, I studied economics and I'm, I'm working in IT when I, I, and actually I forgot to mention, the reason I was able to start my career was because of an internship with Accenture. So I would say, you know, whatever it is you're bringing to the table, you know, you have to understand what you're, you're, you're trying to apply for and work backwards from that. So if you're going for an operations role, which is about customer service, you know, what kind of customer service experience do you have? Did you work in JD Sports? Have you worked in a shop? Do you know how to talk to people? That experience matters. If you're trying to get into banking, well, obviously it's about numbers. So if you've got a business degree or an economics type degree, it helps you. It's not, it's not, it doesn't exclude you if you haven't got those degrees, but it helps. Um, and also self-development. The most important thing I can stress is self-development. So yes, you may not be able to, because you have a side hustle and you can't, you know, do an internship or, 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 or some of these other things, but you can invest in yourself. There's there are lots of online platforms where you can go and start to learn these things and add them to your CV. Because the most important thing when you pr present a CV, you're not just presenting yourself, you're presenting your ambition as well. So you're showing that you've taken time to invest in yourself, you've researched the role, and you've identified skills that are transferable for what, from what you know that are transferable and applicable to the role itself. Um, and I think that's really what it is. So when I made a transition from finance to IT, for example, what I brought to the table was I know how to engage with customers. I know how to talk to customers. I know how to talk to business stakeholders, right? And I know how to talk to people in the business. I know how to take big problems and break it down into simple solutions. All those kind of soft skills, once you can demonstrate them, they help you get in um, into the door for some of these roles. So I, I want you all three to just think about one bit of advice that you want to give to these interns. I just want to, to say a couple of things before I, I go to Joe, okay? So there's been a lot of questions around, um, would I be accepted into these organizations? Yes, yes, because diversity is not just good for business, it's good for society. So these organizations are committed in terms of doing that. There's been other questions in terms of, if I'm an international student, if I've got 10 years experience, will they be able to, to look at me? These organizations, we've got organizations signed up to support 10,000 black interns. If you're in full-time education and you've got transferable skills, you're hungry, you're motivated, you will be given the opportunity. Bottom line. Bottom line, we wouldn't have these three men on this panel talking about their organizations if they didn't believe there was a place for us. So please make sure that you get your LinkedIn profiles representing, so no spelling mistakes, looks on point. You make sure after this meeting, you send invites to me, Charles, Joe, Ricky. Questions around 10,000 Black interns, go to the website. We've got career fairs, we've got CV workshops. You've got to put in the work. You put in the work, the opportunities will come. So I'm gonna to go to Joe first. Joe, 20 seconds or less. What one bit of advice would you give to these participants in terms of being able to be successful? Uh, for me, be persistent. But once you get there, once you get the interviews, once you get your foot in the door, once you get accepted for these roles, don't get complacent. And it's important not to get complacent. Thank you, keep man. going, keep going, keep pushing. And, and look, with, with Joe, the, the hustle's real. Joe, Joe mm. is still working, still grinding. It doesn't stop. Doesn't stop. That's it. Ricky, Ricky. So for me, really important, self-reflection. So understand yourself so that you can understand others. We talked a lot about communicating with people and that's a really, really good place to start. Your mindset, have an open mindset, a growth mindset. Don't judge, 
be open to the possibilities and be brave. Be brave enough to have the confidence to be honest and your true self. No, no, no but a true word. Look, again, I think it's really important, guys. Let's utilize this platform. Reach out to Ricky, reach out to Charles, reach out to, to Joe. But think about the questions that you're going to ask them. So reaching out and saying, hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Give them something to help you tangibly, okay? Really important to utilize this. Um, last but certainly not least, Charles. So for me, I think of it as like a, a, a T model. So, you know, keep developing yourself, keep building up your knowledge and your skills across a as wide a breadth as possible, but then start to really dig deep into intentionally where you're trying to get into. So whether it's banking or you want to work in the fintech area, start to research and understand specifically what part of fintech you want to get into, whether it's, or, or if you want to get into to investment banking, whatever it might be, start to build up that depth of knowledge. Um, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. Give, careers take time. So just start with that and, and start to build with every opportunity you get. Don't mess it up. Just, get, just give it your 100%. And look, just to conclude, and thank you, like, again, uh, th this has been one of the most enjoyable sessions for me because you're all relevant, right? You're all relevant in terms of where you've come from, the challenges that you've experienced, okay? And I think it's really important that these participants understand that this is attainable for us all. It's not about where you start, it's about where you finish. You've got Joe, JD Sports Management, and he's now working for one of the most um, oldest private banking institutions in a client-facing role, looking after Stormzy and Marcus Ratchet money. You've got MC Ricky Benjamin, Brunel University, who's running a region, a black man running a region, right? And then you've got Charles, who started as an accountant management consultant, technologist, and is now running a platform, again, at a perceived elite organization. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I would like to thank my three incredible, inspirational panelists. I'm hitting you up on LinkedIn after this because I want to know where Charles got his suit from, I want to know where Ricky got his tie from, and I want to be Joe's customer so he's looking after my money. I would also like to thank all of the participants for their incredible, incredible questions. Hit me up on LinkedIn, the same with our panelists. Any questions go to 10,000 Black Interns. It's coming home. I'll hopefully see you all in the near future. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Come on, England.